Hi everyone, so today we are going to be discussing about polynomials and greatest integer function. So you are probably going to be coming across a couple of interesting properties of the greatest integer function. But other than that, I just want you to see the problem yourself. It's very elegant. So let's just begin. So this is the problem number B1 from the Putnam exam in the year 2005. And in this video, we're going to be talking about polynomials and the greatest integer function. And interesting result. After that, we have some book sessions for college mathematics and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, great. So it's asking us the problem is uh, the goal is to find a non zero polynomial P of x, y. Non zero is very critical such that it satisfies this given condition. You know, P of floor of A times P of floor 2A is zero for all reals A. So if I just maybe take, for instance, x as floor of A and y as floor of 2A, I want P of x, y to be equal to zero for all a belonging to real numbers. That is essentially the condition that we have. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, let's just start with some basics, I guess. So we know that any integer a can be written as the greatest integer function of a plus the fractional part of a, which I'll call as r. Or if you're you know more used to this way of writing it, this will be floor of x plus the fractional part of x, right? And we know that the fractional part of x is belonging from 0 to 1. Right? It cannot be 1, but it can be equal to 0. So it's somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay, 0 included and 1 excluded. So effectively, r can be between 0 and 1. I'm using this convention r, okay? Okay, great. So a is the floor of a plus r, but r is the fractional part of a. Okay, great. What about 2a? 2a will be nothing but twice the floor of a plus 2r okay great what about the floor of 2a so what i'm doing over here is i'm just taking floor on both sides right so this becomes the floor of twice floor of a plus 2r so this entire thing enclosed under the floor function okay well great but there's actually a very nice property about the floor function so let me just highlight this over here note so whenever we have the floor of let's say k plus n that becomes just k plus the floor of n right where k is an integer let me just give you some examples if i want to find out the floor of 5.1 can i write this as floor of 5 plus 0.1 which just becomes 5 plus the floor of 0.1 which is obviously 5 and that's the correct answer floor of 5.1 is 5. another example floor of maybe 6.7 i can write this as floor of 6 plus 0.7 which just becomes 6 plus the floor of 0.7 which is 6 which is also correct right floor of 6.7 is indeed 6 if i have let's say uh, 7.999 i can write this as floor of 7 plus 0.999 so this just becomes 7 comes outside because it's an integer plus floor of 0.999 which is obviously 0 this entire thing becomes 7, which is actually true, right? Floor of 7.999 is indeed 7. This applies to negative numbers as well. Floor of, let's say, negative 2.3, we know for a fact that it is negative 3. But using the kind of format that I am following, I can write this as negative 2, uh, negative 0.3. So this negative 2 will come out plus the floor of negative 0.3, which so happens to be negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1, and it is negative 3, which we know holds true. Or you could have also written as like this. You can also written it as floor of negative 3 plus 0.7. So over here, negative 3 comes out plus the floor of 0.7, which is 0. So this is negative 3. Either way, you get negative 3. So my point essentially is that um, this property holds true, <laughs> right? And that's great because we are going to use this over here. So let me just write this equation number 1 over over here down at the bottom so we had floor of 2a 
is the entire floor of this two times floor a plus two r something like this now we know that floor of a will be an integer floor of any quantity is always an integer right it will always give an output as an integer two is an integer multiplication of two numbers is also an integer so this entire thing over here this is an integer so you can take it out right so the floor of 2a is basically 2 times the floor of a plus floor of 2r now there is further simplification that can be done notice that r is between 0 and 1 effectively it satisfies this given inequality so 2r will be something like this right so the floor of 2r is either 0 or 1 right it cannot be 2 because notice it is strictly less than 2 there is a strict inequality on the upper bound so it cannot be 2 it can be 1 floor of 2r can be 1 because for example floor of 1.99 is 1 right similarly the floor of 0.98 is 0 something like that so effectively what i'm trying to say is that the floor of 2r will either be 0 or 1 it cannot take any other value so this thing can either be 0 or 1 so basically the floor of 2a can either be twice times floor of a plus 0 which is 2 times floor of a or it can be 2 times floor of a plus 1 which is a very important result this is a very generalized kind of result because we are not using anything in the problem over here this is this general algebra that we are doing right till now the entire thing i did nothing in the problem i just kind of proved this in a way result an interesting observation that the floor of 2a can either be one of these two quantities so basically to kind of rewrite it floor of 2a will be twice the floor of a or the floor of 2a will be twice the floor of a plus 1 which is the most critical step for solving this now again now let's come to the problem so we want to find the polynomial p of x comma y such that when you input x as floor of a and y as floor of 2a you get 0 and that's why i was playing around with this a and 2a right because we needed that floor of a and floor of 2a somewhere right so i'm just going to take x as floor of a and y as floor of 2a and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just plug these in in equations 2 and 3 respectively so from equation number 2 i'll get y is equal to 2x or from equation number 3 i'll get y is equal to 2x plus 1 so what we do know right now is y can be either 2x or y can be 2x plus 1 another way to just write this is y minus 2x is equal to 0 or y minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0 right just taking things to the left hand side and right hand side becomes 0 now this necessarily implies that y minus 2x times y minus 2x plus 1 will be 0. Why? Why, why do I say that? Because when I say some quantity ab is equal to 0, what does this imply? a is 0. Either a is 0 or b is 0. Both can also be 0. Very true. Both can also be 0. But effectively, either a can be 0 or b can be 0. So when I write this statement, when I write the statement, either y minus 2x can be 0, which implies that y is equal to 2x, or the second thing, y minus 2x plus 1 can be 0, or y is equal to 2x plus 1, which is what we wanted over here. Either y is equal to 2x or y is equal to 2x plus 1. So effectively, if I had to write that in one statement, it needs to satisfy this given relation. Let me just mark this equation number 4. So we need that to happen and we need to find a polynomial. So the polynomial p x comma y is y minus 2x times y minus 2x plus 1, which is what we had to find. And this satisfies because once you plug in x as floor of a and y as the floor of 2a, you will notice that y minus 2x is 0 or y minus 2x plus 1 is 0. One of these two things will be 0, right? So effectively, y is equal to 2x or y is equal to 2x plus 1 which is the result that we had concluded where is it over here this thing over here right so that is why this polynomial essentially works because when you plug in root uh, i mean the floor of a and the floor of 2a one of these two quantities 
one of these two quantities, either this or this, will necessarily become zero. And therefore, P of floor A, comma, floor of 2A will always, always, always be zero for all values of A, for every integer A. So yeah, I think that was a pretty cool problem involving the floor function, which is one of my most favorite functions. So yeah, hope you learned something from that. Okay, so moving on to your certain book sessions for college mathematics, Introduction to Real Analysis, Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Rudin, Calculus Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Apostle, Topology, Contemporary Abstract Algebra by Galen, Topics in Algebra by Hurstein, Abstract Algebra by Domit and Furt, and of course, Linear Algebra done right by Axler. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. So we need to find all polynomials P of x, y with real coefficients, which for all real numbers x and y satisfy this given relation, right? You plug in x plus y, comma x minus y, you get two, two times P of x, comma y. So you need to find all polynomials with real coefficients, of course, that satisfy this given relation. So maybe try it out, and if you're able to make any progress on it, let me know in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and bye-bye. Data programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.